Good afternoon, my name is Jose Manuel Saez. I am a professor at UNED University, Spanish National University of Distant Education in Spain. And I'm going to show you several uh, projects about in primary education about using just ICT from a particular perspective because I am also a primary school teacher in Spain. So I'm an associated professor and teacher. And first of all, it's not about tools. The, the most important thing, in my opinion, is uh, teaching methods. The methods are very important, not only the tools. Because uh, Seymour Papert, we talked about logo project, uh, he says a very interesting sentence. The best learning takes place with the learning takes place. And I think that is basic, because that's the way we focus on an active learning. A student learns uh, uh, active with uh, collaboratively and with <coughs> several projects. So I'm going to show you very fast <coughs> four main tools to teach in primary education. Edmodo, Scratch, as uh, Nicholas said, uh, Skype in the classroom, and Minecraft Edu, which is uh, gamification. Right? So we, we start with Edmodo. Edmodo is a virtual learning environment or learning management system. It has several advantages. It is uh, free. It is safe because uh, the teacher control everything. The student can make any comment. Uh, it's filtered by the professor. And you can work all together. Teachers, students, and also parents are in the projects, in the group. So it's a very complete, uh, uh, the tool is very good. As you can see here, there are a teacher from Australia, from USA, so you can collaborate between schools, different schools collaborating in the same projects. And here you, we have content. You can see here the students interacting in the, on the model, so it's very nice to have several projects here on this incredible platform. Next, pla next tool, Minecraft Edu. Minecraft Edu is gamification. It's a gamified, interaction, immersive environment. So you can see here, this is the teacher. This is my avatar. And we go into this world with my students. You can see my students. And we are exploring the Coliseum, in this case. And we have a project about architecture, architectural buildings, the Mayan pyramids. You can see this, these are my students. And the teacher controls everything and can make many projects about immersive learning. And you can also collaborate with other schools because this medieval village is from John's Miller classroom in California. So we, different schools, enter in the same world and we learn a lot with Minecraft Edu from John Levin and many other in New York. And this is a Scratch. <coughs> this is a studio from my primary school students in Spain in sixth grade. And as you can see, this is an uh, artistic um, pieces of art, paintings from Dalí, Picasso, El Greco, um, I forgot, Velázquez. And my students, the avatars, uh, explain everything about Scratch here with their voice and their bubbles. This is my student from Spain and another student from Japan. So uh, we are co uh, collaborating with Japan, with Chukyu University and Hokkaido. And we join, you can see here in this project, two students from different places in the world collaborate in one project. So you have collaboration. This is Garnica, Picasso's Garnica. The student is explaining everything. And you can see here green buttons. When you press the green button, it's a thumb. And you can see, listen to music or Spanish guitar. So I disagree with some opinions here. Let me the joke. Because I think that students can learn how to program. You can see the code of the sprite. You can see the code of the button. It's a variable. It shows, uh, sends to another sprite. So, and you can see how the thumbs of this, because you cannot see the movement here, but you, you can imagine. And even interacting because the computer asks you, what do you think? So I think that is a good way to uh, teach students in, uh, introduction to programming. And my last uh, project, I will, I'm going to finish very soon, is Skype in the Classroom. Uh, Microsoft Education gave me an award at Microsoft Expert Educator 2014 for this project. I'm very thankful for Microsoft. And this uh, it was presented in Global Forum in Barcelona. 
And this is about a Skype in a classroom because we connected with a scientists in Antarctica. So let me show you the project. This is about other penguins. My students uh, learn about the penguins. And we follow every day with a penguin quan, penguin camp, penguin science.com, daily life of other penguins. It's like a big brother of other penguins, something like that. Right? And let me t uh, teach you an anecdote, but, and you have the idea what happened here. My students named the male penguin Pocholo. And this, that's the name. And uh, the, ma the female penguin, Mary. Okay? And the penguins, we uh, students follow penguins every day. They take care of the egg, and the other penguin go to the sea and eat fish and come back. A couple of days eat, eating fish and come back. They take turns. So we were following everything, taking notes, okay. But what happened is that the female penguin, Mary, didn't return. And we were really worried. And maybe this is real life. Maybe a leopard seal ate Mary. That's happened. So we were ready for the drama. That's okay. But what really happened is that Mary returned it, but she went to another male. So it's not drama, it's a soap opera. So uh, pretty much I show you this because you, you, know, uh, you can get how they get information and we learn about all the data with other penguins, uh, problem, uh, uh, problem solving, knowledge construction. You can see that penguins have long legs. It's the plumage that covers the legs. At model, interactions. Uh, PowerPoint presentations to the kindergarten kids, uh, blogging, ICT, and UNESCO standards. This is, uh, the structure is that, but I'm not going to uh, tell you about this, it's too long. And eventually we connected with uh, uh, Jim Pinkoff. She's a researcher in Antarctic, Antarctica. So we connected in English, it's difficult for us, but it's challenging. And she showed us an iceberg with a webcam. Uh, what they do, the satellite phone, so many questions. Uh, my students make questions. Uh, we really learn a lot about what scientists do in Antarctica. So we were really happy with this project. I am thank thankful to these organizations. And, well, this is everything I wanted to say. It's very shortly. And if you want to follow my, <coughs> my Twitter account, and, and this is the Critic Commons images, because I, I had to show that. And thank you so much. That's everything. Thank you.